Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today we're gonna to be doing a video on serotonin and how it helps improve sleep and how it helps improve mood. We're gonna be going over a detailed article that I wrote on this topic. I'm really excited to share it with you guys. Before we do, let me know your experience with low serotonin and using natural serotonin supports to help and improve your health. Really curious. Also, make sure you smash that like button, really helps, and feel free and share the video with friends and family that could benefit. All right, so let's dive in. What is serotonin? Serotonin is a it's a neurotransmitter, right? Neurotransmitters these are essentially compounds that sit in between pre and postsynaptic neurons, and they help kind of conduct that impulse between the nerves. Serotonin is very important; has major influences on mood, well-being, sleep, uh, resiliency to stress. Serotonin is primarily made by the amino acid 5-HTP and some of the cofactors, including B6 and vitamin C. Uh, serotonin is very important. So if we're not getting enough protein, not digesting protein, inadequate B vitamins, especially B6, and not enough um, 5-HTP. And again, typically in amino acid world, that's going to come from the amino acid tryptophan, L-tryptophan, then we may have issues in regards to our mood, sleep, energy, resiliency to stress, and that should be one of the first places we look. So serotonin helps with stress. I mentioned resilience. It's a, also a precursor to melatonin. Melatonin is a sleep hormone, and it's a powerful antioxidant. So melatonin helps with sleep, staying asleep, powerful anti-cancer antioxidant as well, anti-aging benefits. So if we have issue with mood or sleep, definitely have to look there. If we have inadequate HCL levels, we're going to have problems in regards to breaking down our protein and making high quality serotonin as well. Those are all possibilities of things we have to look at. And of course, I mentioned a lot of the cofactors. And if we have bottlenecks and issues in our gut that could be affecting digestion and absorption of nutrition, that could obviously play a major role as well. I'm going to dive deep into one of my articles that I wrote on the topic. Let's do this. I'm going to shrink myself here so you guys can see the article. Hopefully, you guys like that format. All right, so out of the gates here. So we talk about um, serotonin. It has major roles in regards to affecting sleep and wake cycles because melatonin has an inverse relationship to cortisol. So as melatonin goes up, cortisol goes down. So we have a natural circadian rhythm where the sun comes up in the morning, cortisol's up, melatonin's down, and then as cortisol drops throughout the day and at nighttime, melatonin goes up, right? So we need that healthy rhythm, and if we have inadequate levels of melatonin, that may prevent our cortisol from dropping at night. Obviously, things um, serotonin comes from melatonin. Things like lots of light at night can definitely keep melatonin suppressed. Serotonin plays a major role with feeling satiated, right? A lot of times we're boosting serotonin through lots of sugar and refined processed carbohydrates. So good proteins, good amino acids, that's going to keep your appetite in check. And of course, serotonin plays very important roles with our adrenals, with our thyroid. Uh, healthy neurotransmitters help our adrenals as well. So that plays a role with healthy metabolism too. And again, dopamine and serotonin tend to be connected. There's a natural relationship between serotonin and dopamine. The same enzyme, the aromatic decarboxylase enzyme, plays a role in metabolizing dopamine as well. So here's the here's the uh, the pathway and how serotonin's made. So we start with tryptophan. That's an amino acid, and there's a lot of different nutrients here. So you can see iron's very important. So if you're a female with low iron, that could be a big big problem. You can see B6 plays a very important role. Folic acid or folate's a better way to call it. And then, of course, B6 and then calcium and magnesium play very important roles in helping tryptophan to convert to 5-HTP. Now, some patients ask me, they say, well, should you give tryptophan versus 5-HTP? There's a natural enzyme here called 5-hydroxylase that is a natural governor, right? So sometimes you have cars that's, that they have it hardwired in the chip that makes it so the car can't go faster than 100 or 120 miles per hour, right? There's a governor on the engine. Well, there's a governor with tryptophan being converted to 5-HTP. So people have extreme deficiencies. They may need 5-HTP to bypass that governor of tryptophan converting to 5-HTP. There's not that governor with 5-HTP to serotonin. So 5-HTP and B6 and vitamin C and zinc and magnesium are all needed to help this conversion happen. So they play very, very important roles. And you can see serotonin plays important roles with gut motility. So if you have gut imbalances, SIBO, bacterial overgrowth, malabsorption, that could cause some problems with motility. Serotonin can help that. 
Um, also chronic pains. I've seen patients that have chronic joint pain, just systemic pain, like not like I exercise too hard, but just kind of systemic pain. Sometimes serotonin can play a major role with that. Of course, sleep issues and carb cravings. A lot of times people will use a lots of refined sugar to boost um, serotonin levels, but it's short term, right? It's like whipping a tired horse. It's not going to actually fix the issue. And again, the goal is to make melatonin on your own. Sometimes melatonin supplementation may be okay. I always look at the nutrient precursors before I go to melatonin. I always want to get higher up the chain versus go down the stream. So I hope that makes sense in that part. But important to have these cofactors. So if you're a female too with low iron or you're a vegetarian vegan, again, females have low iron issues because they menstruate every month. So if they have estrogen dominance and heavy bleeding, they're more prone to low iron. Obviously, if you're vegan or vegetarian, you're not eating animal products. Heme-based iron, animal heme-based iron is the best form. It really increases iron saturation and ferritin. So that could also impair serotonin and cause sleep problems as well. So very important here out of the gates. A couple things I wanted to highlight. Dapagenic herbs can play major roles with reuptake and supporting serotonin. So some of my favorite here, reishi is excellent. Ashwagandha is excellent. Cordyceps, very good. Ginseng, awesome. Shisandra, rosemary, very, very good herbs that are, Eleuthero is awesome. So my Adrenal Revive product, we have ashwagandha, we have Eleuthero, we have some ginseng, and we have one more product in there. We have Eleuthero, ashwagandha, rhodiola, and rhodiola, I think I started up there, and was there somewhere, and ginseng. So they play very important roles with just helping serotonin to work better. It has some mild reuptake inhibition. So you have medications that, they're SSRIs, right? They are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. They block that pre and postsynaptic neuron. The problem is when you do that, you increase the recycling of serotonin. So you can actually have a momentary increase of serotonin, but then you increase the recycling and the breakdown, and then you can create functional deficiencies. That's why over time, these medications tend to have to be increased over time, not dropped, and they also have side effects too. And of course, it, you know, we have a lot of our nutrients here. So a lot of our vegetables and some fruit can be great because they're very high in B vitamins, B6, magnesium. Of course, our animal products are where you're going to get most of your densest uh, form of, uh, you know, proteins and amino acids on here. And I'm not sure why there's bread on there. I'm going to have to pull that out. That should not be there. Breads, you want to stay away from refined grains and excess carbohydrates. So we'll have to pull that one out and just good amino acids, good uh, fruit, good vegetables, that must have slipped by my editor, so apologize for that. And then if we look at some of the other nutrients that play important roles, magnesium plays a very important role. It's also a natural beta blocker. It really helps calm and relax the, the body. And so when the more stressed you are, the more you burn up serotonin, the more you deplete your melatonin. So magnesium has very, very beneficial effects. Also, it has um, effects of inhibiting your NMDA receptor sites, okay? NMDA would be another video on that, but NMDA plays a major role in your neurotransmitters as well. And we gotta get to the root cause, right? I mean, the, and we got the root cause is always gonna be stress, right? Physical, chemical, emotional stress, poor digestion, not breaking down your amino acids, not having enough of the important cofactors like magnesium, zinc, iron, B6, folate, vitamin C, and consuming lots of inflammatory foods play a really important role. And of course, GABA plays a role too because GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. It helps relax you, right? It calms down the nervous system. So you make GABA from... Um, uh, L-theanine is an important cofactor for GABA. It's an amino acid. So are some of the B vitamins. So if you don't have enough good GABA support on board, it's going to be hard for you to downshift and relax. And of course, there's herbs that influence that. So passion flower, valerian, tend to be GABA-based adaptogens. Kava plays a big role, CBD as well. So these could be other things to help support kind of downshifting, as you will, and being able to relax. They could play a really, really important role. And then again, on testing wise, we use a couple different tests. So some of the big things I'll look at are going to be 5-hydroxy and doloacetate. I look at that via organic acid testing. So I'll use an organic acid test. We'll also look at homovanilate too. Homovanilate and vanilmandolate play really important roles because these look at dopamine and adrenaline. And there's a natural relationship where if you're really burning up and, and depleting a lot of dopamine and depleting and making a lot of adrenaline and depleting your adrenaline levels, you're probably having issues with serotonin 
because they kind of work together, right? So if you're having functional dopamine and adrenaline issues, you're probably not too far behind having a serotonin issue. So typically, you know, out of the gates, I have a, a brain replete product that I use right here, brain replete, and it's got a 10 to 1 re relationship between uh, tyrosine to um, 5-HTP. So it's got a 10 to 1, 10 times more dopamine support than serotonin support. And that's very helpful. And of course, all of the, the cofactors, the B6, the vitamin C, the folate, they all play an important role. So I've been using this for years on myself because on my organic acid test, I find I have issues with 5-hydroxy and doloacetate and some of the dopamine precursors. So I keep that in the rotation for me because one, it helps me deal with stress better. It helps me sleep better. And again, that's something that I, I test for. So not everyone may test for it. So that's why we want to assess and not guess. And again, first thing is get it from your food digest your protein, get your some fruits and vegetables, good phytonutrients, good B vitamins, work on your digestion, make sure there's no bottlenecks and being able to break down and absorb a lot of the nutrients. And of course, serotonin replace a product I have. It's a 5-HTP with B6. If you're using 5-HTP, you want to do it with B6 because B6 is a rate-limiting cofactor. And then we have something that's more potent on the dopamine side as well, dopa replete or dopa replete plus, depending on how significant the deficiencies are. So always start with food, always start with digestion, always start with simple cofactors, uh, fix the underlying physical, chemical, and emotional stress, make sure absorption, make sure digestion is good. You really want to look at all these things together. And if you want to reach out, you can always take a look at some of these products that I formulated. I'm going to open it up for questions. So if you guys want to dive in deeper, I hope you enjoyed the article. We'll put the link down below the video. Hope you enjoyed this kind of setup here. I um, hope it was more informative, maybe more interactive. We'll open it up for some live Q&A here as well. And if you want to reach out to myself and or my colleagues in having additional support, we'll put a link down below so you guys can reach out to me directly and schedule. All right, hope you guys are having a phenomenal day. Let me dive in. Let me make myself a little bit more big again here. And if you like this setup, put it in the comments. I appreciate it. I want your feedback. The more I know, the more I grow. All right, there we go. What is cooking in the question land? A couple questions on Facebook. Buddy Steve, Steve, how are we doing, man? How do you decide to use 5-HTP or tryptophan for support? So I always go to 5-HTP with B6 out of the gates because the 5-hydroxylase enzyme is a rate-limiting enzyme in regards to converting tryptophan to 5-HTP. So it's like a governor on an engine. You can only go so fast when that governor is activated. So I can increase levels more therapeutically with 5-HTP and B6 together. Um, and if there's side effects or the person's too sensitive, then we'll go to tryptophan or we'll go to tryptophan with a free form amino acid blend. So it's more um, in a whole food kind of state. And of course, just really working on are we eating enough protein, right? Is there a vegan vegetarian background? Are we having enough hydrochloric acid to break things down? Just like the common foundational things and then we can go up the ladder and then doing some of the organic acid testing can be helpful because if we see things like elevated xanthourinate or kinaurinate, that's a sign of B6 being a problem. And B6 is a rate limiting cofactor for um, 5-HTP to serotonin to convert to converting all that. So we have to make sure the cofactors are there. So can folate, so can B12. So if we're not eating high quality animal products or we're not eating enough leafy greens, that could definitely be a problem. Other natural B vitamin sources that aren't nutritional yeast. I mean, your best B vitamin source is going to be high quality animal products and high quality uh, green vegetables. Those are going to be your best sources out of the gates. So if you're vegan, vegetarian, really lean on those animal, lean on the vegetables and try to get some kind of animal product in there if you can. But if you're coming out of the gates, you can at least use some nutritional amino acids to help too. Uh, what's the best way to test for serotonin um, if it's a problem? The best way to test if serotonin is a problem is the organic acid test. Yes, that is correct. That'd be the best way to look at it. There's some other testing that like neuroscience and people do that look at serotonin and dopamine. There's that testing. I like the organic acid testing, my fave. And the other outside of that supposedly is a spinal tap, but obviously that's going to be painful and pretty invasive. The urinary organic acid is much better. Uh, chiropractors say that 75% of people with seasonal depression are female. Why is that? Uh, it's hard to say why that. I would just say female hormones play a major role. And I think vitamin D and female hormones um, obviously play a connection, right? So vitamin D has an impact on modulating female hormones. And obviously in the winter where there's less vitamin D, right, that's going to impact the hormones. So getting 
either like a really good red light or a sunlight where you can get some exposure or taking, you know, vacationing or supplementing extra vitamin D is going to be helpful. I think it's a vitamin D connection. That makes sense why it's more cyclical. All right. Excellent. Good questions here, guys. Good questions. All right. I'm going to try to keep the questions to only things that are on the topic, y'all. Okay. Just because I want to stay on topic. Hope you guys appreciate it. All right, let me see here. Is there any other questions I can hit you guys up with? So out of the gates too, like how much protein should you have? That should be a good question. I think at, on a minimum, half a gram per pound of body weight's a pretty good minimum. So if you weigh 200 pounds, I would say at least 100 grams of protein per day is a pretty good minimum. As soon as you start lifting weights, probably you know three quarters of a gram to one gram per pound of body weight. So if you're 200 pounds, then 200 grams of protein if you're doing that one to one ratio. If you're at three quarters of a gram per pound and you're at 200 pounds, that's like 150. And if you're obviously at a half a gram per 200 per gram, per, a half a gram per pound, then you're 200 pounds, that'd be 100 grams of protein. And a pretty good rule of thumb is about four ounces of protein, whether it's chicken, fish, or beef, it's gonna be around 30 ish grams. You're looking at about seven-ish grams of protein per ounce of animal protein. So usually about a palm is going to be about four ounces if, you, if you're like a male size hand to like six-ish for a fist and maybe eight-ish for a full hand. And so you can, you know, between that, you're looking at 30 to probably 50-ish grams of protein depending on how big you do. And I do like using increments that you can look at because when you're serving yourself food, you know, it's hard to be like, what's four ounces? What's six ounces? It's like for me, it's, hey, is it a palm? Is it a fist, which obviously is thicker, or is it a full hand? And so that gives you a pretty good idea. And so you're probably looking at between 25 to 50 grams of protein, depending on how big your hand is. And that's a pretty good rule of thumb. You're going to be good there. You're only going to have problems with protein when you're really doing extra, extra lean protein. That's because you need some of fatty acids to process protein. And the only time you're really going to get in trouble is if you're doing extra, extra lean meats all the time, right? A lot of venison, like rabbit boneless, skinless chicken breast. But for the most part, if you're consuming some fats with it or you're consuming full fat meat, meaning like ribeye versus like, you know, a flank steak or chicken thigh with skin on over the chicken breast, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna have some good fats with that and you're gonna be okay. And of course, if you are finding yourself consuming a lot of extra lean meats, you can always add maybe a scoop of coconut oil or grass-fed butter on there as well. Good questions there. Uh, trying to get in the protein I need. Can you do it with collagen? I mean, collagen's great. Collagen's excellent. I don't recommend going all the way with your protein needs with just powders. Powders is a good supplement. But remember, supplements are meant to supplement something that's already good. You're not. It's not a replacement. It's a supplement. So if you're doing it, try to make sure you're coming in there with at least two other really good meals that are going to fill in the gap. Okay, very good. And would it work against serotonin if you have it um, with collagen too close to bedtime? No, I wouldn't see a problem. Collagen is very high in glycine, and I find glycine is very, very relaxing before bed as well. Excellent. Very good. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's video. And again, topic today was all about serotonin and helping it improve your mood and sleep. So in summary, serotonin comes from the amino acid tryptophan, so you need to eat healthy animal products or get some kind of a high-quality amino acid supplement, whether it's a free form amino acid, whether it's a pea protein, right? A whey protein or high quality, um, you know, beef protein or collagen protein, that's going to be helpful. We may even use 5-HCP with B6, folate, B12, vitamin C, important cofactors. Iron's also a big one. So if you're in a, that vegan vegetarian camp, you could be in trouble when it comes to serotonin, mood, and melatonin. We reviewed my article on the topic here. I'll put that on screen here again so you guys can see that. Hope you guys enjoyed it here out of the gates. And um, just so you can see it here one more time, I'm going to shrink myself. Nutrients to help make serotonin improve your mood and sleep. So feel free to head over to justinhealth.com. Click on the blog post section and you'll see it there. Hope you enjoyed today's article, y'all. Feel free to click below. Sharing is caring. Thumbs up. Appreciate it. Comment section.